season of CGL. This is just an absolute treat. These players are so damn good. The talent on these teams is undeniable. Everybody on every team right now is making plays. It's gonna be an exciting start to the season and it'll just get better from here on out. We're about to step to a whole new era of Overwatch Esports. So much exciting action is happening here on CGL that you do not want to miss. Look who's starting it all off, it's Raven. No one can necessarily figure out what is the right way to go just yet. What a nice roll through, <laughs> it's just gonna solidify everything for Mythos. Does come back and Arsario gets the mech, but I don't need a mech, I'll kill for it anyway. This is just a highlight reel for Arsario right now. They're making a statement in the EU Masters here. This patch is still incredibly fresh, there's so much to learn, so much to change about the way we play the game. NKC with the shatter is colossal. Let's get it going. Trades keep coming through. Lores, you're gonna be able to find these shots true. Inu on the overclock with two. Here comes the Nanoblade immediately get back. That's fine. Steel slicing and dicing their way through. Two, three. So back and forth. Welcome back, everybody, to more CGL Season 13 Mid-Season Tournament coverage. My name is Bowser, and I'm joined here by Shadow Fang, as it's time for the first of multiple finals matches we'll be witnessing this weekend, starting off with the North American Diamond here, where Sinner's Hog and Ball Torture face off against IUPUI Bastion OF. <laughs> yeah, a finals match already, and uh, it's it, against two teams that have played each other before, admittedly, with uh, Hog and Ball taking it in a 3-0 fashion, but but that does not mean they're necessarily going to do the same here today because there's, you know, you know, having a little bit more on the line here could always put that little bit of extra pressure on that causes Hog and Ball to maybe make a mistake or two. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be a lot of pressure on IUPI and Bastion OF already. Again, these two faced off, as you mentioned, in the in the regular season so far. And that was a 3-0 sweep for Sinners, Hog, and Ball Torture, who, by the way, have not dropped a single map all season. That includes the mid-season tournament, so they are probably one of the favorites to win this match right here. As we take a look at the roster for Sinners, Hog, and Ball, you see CJ Cool, if a uh, CJ Cool, Fafita, Disser, Dissero, excuse me, T T3 Warlord and Exo on that lineup. Again, they have been a menace winning every single map they've played this entire season. Their opponents, however, are no slouch. They are on a three-match winning streak here, and that is IUPUI Bastion OF. Yeah, and you mentioned it before. They're uh, they're looking for some revenge today, and uh, we've got Shy and Drowsy on that DPS line going against Spotted Squid, Teddy, and Lupin. But like I was saying, they're looking for some revenge because... Uh, Hog and Ball Torture took out the other IUPUI team in this tier in their previous match for this tournament. So, you know, they're trying to trying to get that revenge on because, you know, it would have been pretty fun to see an IUPUI versus IUPUI finals, right? Yeah, it would have been cool to be able to see an in-org <laughs> fight between the two <laughs> Indianapolis University, Purdue University, Indianapolis teams in the CGL Diamond Division. Nonetheless, still going to be an entertaining match. And IUPUI, mm -hmm. Bastion OF, trying to resurrect their sister team while also trying to get revenge for themselves on Hog and Ball Torture. Again, it still is going to be a difficult task considering that their opponents have not lost a single map all season. But maybe the dynamic will change here today. It's going to be a it's going to be a grudge match here today, Shadow Fang, and it's going to start on our first map which by predetermined rules is nepal yeah nepal uh, a really interesting map where you can have a variety of different comps working honestly um i still personally expect to see both teams running this ramatra rush comp that we've been seeing a lot of uh maybe we get a little variation on the dps where we'll see like a tracer sojourn or something like that or maybe they even opt to do like the we haven't seen it too often, but you can never opt out. Or you can never completely rule out a Symmetra Teleporter on a map like Nepal that has a really good point for it. 
Yeah, definitely. Symmetra has some opportunity to work on Nepal, especially on the village where you could just be in that enclosed space and put turrets all around the entrance. And we may see that brawl composition come out from Sinner's Hog and Ball Torture, considering that is their preferred comp. That is their favorite mm -hmm. composition. So they like playing they like playing that brawl style, though that could be with a hint of sarcasm because their favorite mode is two CP. So yeah. for all we know, that could be a that could be one of the biggest lies in the book. Uh Bastion <laughs> OF, however, are gonna have to try and sort out this situation because if they are going to try and run the brawl comp it's obviously not going to be in their wheelhouse considering their favorite composition as a team is dive but who knows their tank player their tank player listed here as squid happens to be a junker queen player so we could see that junker queen or we could see some dive yeah. compositions come out from this team so it's going to be a matter of which team can come out with the prime composition to find victory in this first map of the series yeah, yeah. I mean, we have been seeing a lot of that D.Va composition with like D.Va, Tracer, Echo. So we could see something along those lines as well. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked to see it go either way with that. Uh, do, do, the, do Bastion OF pull out the Bastion composition? It's going to be interesting to see what they decide to pull up as we do have one quick swap coming in here for the Sinner's Hog and Ball Torture lineup, and that is going to be Frogito actually on that support hold, and T3 Warlord is actually playing the tank here. So just a one little change to, before we head into the actual map here, which this probably makes a little bit more sense to try and run your ideal lineup for this matchup. So we'll see if it benefits Hog and Ball Torture to their, to their benefit, and we'll be able to see if it works. Judging by the hero selection here, minus maybe T3 Warlord, something tells me they're going to play Brawl. Because if everyone's favorite hero is a Brawl character, mm -hmm. Junkrat, yes, is indeed a Brawl character. I, I can confirm. I used to play Junkrat in multiple different compositions for Brawl. Nonetheless, if, all, if four of your five heroes listed here, or your four of your five most played heroes here, are indeed, are indeed Brawl characters, I'm going to expect that you are going to be running a Brawl composition. Yeah, definitely. I'm gonna be really disappointed if Frogito isn't the Lucio player. That's gonna that's gonna be a disappointing thing for me on a personal level. We'll look at it though, Frogito and Exo. Exo boots, I just put it together. Yeah, I mean, hey, listen, I've seen a I've seen a player named Genji Main play Reinhardt, so anything is possible. Yeah. Any anything <laughs> is possible true. in the realm of Overwatch. So we'll have to see if that is gonna be the case if Frogito is going to be playing that Lucio or if they're gonna be playing something different here, but Nonetheless, hopefully getting into the map here soon, Shadowfang. We'll have to see what these two teams are willing to pull out to try and get themselves in prime position to win this first map and try to get that ball rolling to try and take the midseason title in the Diamond Tier Division for North America. Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. I'm, I'm hoping for a close game here today because, uh, you know, a lot of the games so far haven't been quite too close one way or the other. But, you know, we'll honestly just have to wait and see uh, do you think we might even have a mirror duel here or will they potentially or will one team opt for the dive and the other team will opt for the rush because you know as we mentioned Bastion's favorite comp is the is the dive composition whereas the hog and ball team loves to run the Ramatra comp. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what these two teams are going to try to pull out and what they think is ideal. Um, I've actually been able to cast the other IUPUI team, so I know what they've been able to play. And both of those teams are managed by the same person. I don't know if they're coached by the same person. I would have to do my research on that, but who knows? Maybe they're thinking of the same strats. Maybe they're trying to come up with the different strategies of their own. Nonetheless, though, the wait is over. We're heading into Nepal from our, for our first map, and after that, it is loser's pick for our hybrid map, then Flashpoint, then, if necessary, push and escort for loser's pick in this series. But we're about to get started underway here, Shadowfang, and we'll have to see what these two teams are going to pull out on Nepal. Yeah, I'm, I'm really expecting just the, the dueling uh, brawl compositions, honestly. I'd be surprised if it went any way other than that. Uh, we might, like you said, though, we might get to see the queen go up against the ram. I tend to like the ram in that matchup, personally, if it goes that way. But but I don't think the, the queen is necessarily a bad, a bad decision. Yeah, as we were about to actually enter Nepal, but we ran into a slight tech issue, so we're going to have to wait a little bit. Definitely, that Junker Queen comp can work against a Ramatra. I should know, I was, the receive I was on the receiving end of that, but also Ramatra comps can win against the Junker Queen comp. But is this going to be a factor of which team's able to pull out that right composition at the right time? Yeah, yeah, most, most definitely, most definitely. Um... 
I, I don't... Hmm. It, it, it's going to kind of vary based on which map we happen to get for Nepal. I personally, I really like Sanctum the best on this map. I feel like it's got the most... The most different angles to play to get, like, various advantages. And it's going to be the best for, like, a Sojourn or an Ash or some character that wants to sit and snipe across the across that big opening of Sanctum. Yeah, definitely. So we'll have to see which of you, we'll have to see what map it is going to be that we'll start off on, what these two teams are trying to run for their own in that situation, and how it's going to work out in their favor. While while we were waiting, I was looking at the uh, I was looking at the team sheets just to get some more information about these teams, and I mm. happened to notice that uh, four of the six players actually wait, see one, two, three, four of the seven players on the side of IUPUI Bastion OF. Uh, wish to be something else. Uh, let's see. We have one person who wants to be a squid, one person who wants to be a Pokemon, one person who wants to be a potato, and one person who wants to be a teddy bear. Uh, so, yeah, that, that should tell you enough. Uh, nonetheless, we'll see if they're willing to actually, you know, bring in their human <laughs> spirit for this matchup because hopefully you'll, be able to, hopefully you'll be able to work in their favor here for this matchup. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely. Um, that that is really funny that you say that though, because I'm I'm looking at their names now as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all of them make sense. So yeah, you probably you probably would be sense. able to tell if you looked in the lobby and you saw who the players were. You probably be able to tell who which one of those said each single one of the uh, which what which one of them would want to be what I just referenced there. So. I mean that that would tell you all you need to know also you know it's fun it's it's interesting to have these college teams in this sort of tournament here like iupui bastion of mm. this is a college team these are academic teams they do this while are while they're studying in college and they're also commu uh, creating a group together and you know this team is two this team is apparently one year old and they've only had mm. two roster swaps which means that they basically have been a combined team for one for one whole yeah. year compared yeah. to their adversaries who are just about treading on one month old as of a few <laughs> days ago. So synergy could mean a lot, especially in a team-based game like Overwatch. So hopefully yeah. IUPI, Bastion OF show that synergy in great force here, having that year-long synergy to build off of. Yeah, I know every time I've personally been on a really, really good team, what's essentially been the biggest key is just not having to communicate what you're going to do to your teammates. So if they if they have synergy, if they have synergy to that extent, that will definitely give them a massive advantage because just knowing what people are going to do before they do it makes it really easy for you to plan out everything else. Um, like, for instance, in my case, I played support, so it was really easy. And we're going into the map now. So here, here we go. Yep, here we are about to finally enter our first map of the series. Again, Nepal being the pre-selected map choice due to the tournament rules. After this, it'll be a loser's pick for the rest of the series. But we're starting off here on Shadow Shadowfang. And already, I like what we're seeing. Basically, mirror compositions minus the support line for Hog and Ball Torture, which I assume is going to be changing. Yeah, I would have to imagine that the Lucio... And I would have expected the Kiriko to go along with the Junker Queen, but I don't, I don't dislike the Bap if you're gonna run the May Reaper. That's a that's a really solid. Play. I think just all that group healing is gonna be really good for you. Well, now as the two teams exit the spawn door, we'll see what these teams are capable of. Sinners Hog and Ball Torture again have not lost a single map all season, but not a very clean exit on the way out with that teleporter support. Nonetheless, they're going to be able to get to the point first with that speed boost. IUPUI Bastion fighting into a brick wall. Literally, as half the team is walled off by that May from... Fa from Fafita, but still, IUPUI Bastion still in this. They're forced to use that Immortality Field early. Now, Spotted Squid looking for that first target to try and engage on. They've already used the Shout, but meanwhile, T3 Warlord is in the back line of the, of the Bastion OF team. So far, only wounds. No sort of blood has been spilled until, Lup until Lupin is the first one to die to the hands of Fafita on that May. Make that two for this May of Fafita cleaning up the field here as IUPUI Bastion OF are forced to retreat and give Hog and Ball Torch for the point first. Yeah, a really good fight there from Hog and Ball Torture. That that was really, it, it really just felt like the Maya Fafita was be, was able to just sit back, chill, and just fire off icicles until they eventually did get a couple of back to back headshots to get those kills off. Um, I th I think Bastion, 
the IUPUI team needs to try and wall off T3 Warlord if they're going to overextend so hard with this uh, queen. Yeah, definitely. T3 Warlord already extending so far up, going up to the top spot where Bastion, were, where Bastion OF were coming in here. Now they're going to be taking the drop down. The wall from Fafita does not land, but the Rampage does onto all five members from the side of Bastion OF. And that Immortality Field is only going to keep you up for so long. Cool, CJ Cool popping up with the kill feed with three. Make that four with the hammer kill on the Lupin. And Bastion OF sent back to spawn from a team kill for the side of Hog and Ball Torture. All right, that's my player of the match right there. As soon as we get the hammer kill, I've got that's my vote. It's in already. <laughs> it's in already as we speak. Uh, but this Kiriko, this Kiriko is honestly looking like a better pick over that over that Baptiste so far. Yeah, definitely. So we'll see what National F are able to do here. They're taking the long rotation out to the right side. The wall comes in, but it doesn't catch anybody off guard. Now here comes the window from Lupin, but they're already killed out here by Exo on that Kiriko. And that is Teddy Graham trying to use the bleat in the blizzard. But unfortunately, they were frozen up before they got onto it. That is a CGL certified Ajax. Oh, yes. I love it. I love it right on cue. We get the little stamp at the bottom of your screen right there. I'm so glad we have that. Um, and the Bastion team swapping over to the Sigma, which I think works better if you're going to run the Baptiste, but you're still, you've still got to deal with this, uh, sound barrier from Frogito. So, like, even if you get a good Blizzard off, you need to, like, not have this beat take everybody out. Here comes the Death Blossom from Drowsy into the back line, trying to find a kill, but all they are able to do is force out the Ice Block from Fel from Fafita. Nonetheless, though, Bastion OF are able to flip the point, but now that Fargito has that beat, the rest of Bastion OF trying to stabilize, but now they're down, they're Ana, and now CJ once again pulling out the hammer and getting rid of Spotted Squid as well. Make that two hammer kills for this Torbjorn, looking for a third on to Shy. Exo will clean up the May before they're able to get that final blow, and now as the point flips back over for the side of the Hog and Ball Torture, they're just rushing to keep everybody from Bastion OF off the points so that they can catch Shrine and take their first point in the series. Yeah, it really felt like Bastion OF just could never get a foothold anywhere on this point. To and They just couldn't get a nice group going or anything, really, quite honestly. So now, after a very swift point one from Sinner's Hog and Ball Torch, we head over to the Sanctum here which is probably the most unique out of all of these points. It has that giant gap in the center. Brawl mm -hmm. is kind of difficult to run on this map, Shadowfang. That being said, we're seeing Hog and Ball Torture continue on this Brawl while Bastion OF are trying to think about what swaps they want to make to try and take the advantage. Yeah, you can certainly still run this Queen Comp 100%. All you have to do is have control over that high ground that is observing the point because it just it has so many angles on it and it helps you create a kill box around the point. So as long as Hog and Ball Torture is able to do that, they can run this comp. No Hog and Ball Torture also making the swap over to the Baptiste now with Exo going over to that support hero. And already CJ Cool has found two before the fight's even begun. Lupin and Drowsy brought back to the grave. Now it's an immediate push here from the side of Hog and Ball Torture, pushing all the way up to the side of IUPI Bastion OF and keep them walled outside of this first room. And they're going to start counting up the percentage and taking that point first once they decide to actually step on the objective. Yeah, I mean, honestly, just a couple of good shots there from CJ to get those kills, but good retreat by Bastion OF to not let yourselves trickle in down two players just to all die. So, you know, really smart play. So now as Bastion OF trying to push back in, they're already met with a grim fade as Warlord is able to get rid of Shy. Lupin's also taken out a fight here by Frogito, and it just seems like this Hog and Ball Torture team just have so much more sustain, so much more pressure that they're applying to the enemy squad. And here comes CJ Cool trying to get that third hammer kill of the match here today. Not going to happen as T3 Warlord's Jagged Knife gets rid of the Sigma first. Oh, so close to another hammer kill. So close. Exo is probably going to pop this window right into the spawn right now. I'd be surprised if they didn't. Yeah, definitely is Bastion OF trying to set up for this next engage, but you see the rest of the rest of HBT are currently in this small room waiting for the opportunity to come for the team to come in. There's the wall off from F Fafita to try and keep everyone off that objective. So far, it only forces out the immortality field, but Exos is burned first, and they're actually burned out of the fight before they can use that amplification matrix. But CJ answers back with a kill onto the opposing Baptiste. T3 Warlord out of the fight and spotted Squid. Probably one of the luckiest bands alive getting booped onto the point instead of into the pit. And as the points are clean, the the picks are cleaned up. Bastion OF are taking this this point for their own. Yeah, I mean, that was just really huge, catching Exo in that trap and then securing that kill. 
if you're if you're bashing OF, you need to just stay aggressive, as aggressive as you possibly can, and keep laying the pressure down on the Hog and Ball Torture. So now bashing OF trying to poke out the members of Hog and Ball Torture as they start rotating around the long way, trying to take this way into the shelter. But here comes that Gravitic Flux, or the Gravit, yeah, the Gravitic Flux from Shelter Squid going into the air, trying to knock some people into the ground. So far hasn't found any final blows, but now every single all popped and Shy Fight 2 with the Rip Tire, both support dead on the side of Hog and Ball Torture. And now Fafita's not long for this world as it is a wipe here from Bash and OF, cleaning up the field and equaling now, the percentage now on this objective. Great work staying aggressive there by Bastion OF, honestly. And you managed to hold on to your soldier ult and your bat window, but but you're running into the male, the queen ult, and the Lucio ult from the side of Hog and Ball Torture. This is gonna this is gonna be really, really difficult for them to win without their own sound barrier. We'll see if Bastion OF are able to keep that sustain on their own. As right now the wall from Fafita goes in. Here comes the rampage from the Junker Queen, but it only catches on to Shy on that Junkrat. Fafita, however, unleashes the Blizzard and they catch Teddy Graham off guard. Lupin also has this amplification matrix to try and separate the members of the Sinners. B comes in from Brogito to keep the team sustained, but so far they haven't been able to find any other kills outside of that Lucio, and it just seems like Bastion OF are able to stabilize a little bit better. Now 2-3 Warlords send into the background. They're killed out by Shy on this Junkrat. And now CJ Cool has made the emergency swap to the Bastion to try to pump in the damage, but it's not enough. The immortality from Lupin keeps everyone up, and Bastion OF are one fight away from being able to take this objective. Oh, that was an absolutely massive immortality field from Lupin. So many players were one shot from death right there. Oh, if they can get the stagger out, that would be so huge. Oh, the stagger won't even matter because the Junker Queen oh. cannot touch the objective as the ticker goes up to 100%. And IUPUI Bash and OF bring us over to one final point on your, here on Nepal, and it's time for the village. It, it certainly is time for the village. Uh, do, do we think they're going to opt for that Symmetra teleporter? There, we did see the Sim TP out of spawn from Sinner's Hog and Ball Torture the last time when, when we played on uh, Prime. Yeah, fine. So perhaps they could do it again. It looks like if we're not being trolled right now, they're going to go for the Wrecking Ball composition. And IEPUI, Bastion OF, seems like they're going to stick to this Sigma composition, which makes perfect sense. They looked so, so good on it last match. Yeah, definitely. We'll see what the change is going to be. Sinners Hog and Ball Torch, however, are running one difference. That is a far mercy from the side of Sinner's Hog and Ball Torture. Fafita and Exo running on that composition here as the Wrecking Ball comes in here from T3 Warlord. Shy is killed out, but Spotted Squid gets that trade off onto the Farah. And now that mercy of Exo is good enough, is all good, but dead here. But Lupin dies first, and the mercy is actually still alive. Exo able to get away from all that pressure. Now you have Tier 3 Warlord going into the back line and getting rid of Drowsy and the Hog and Ball Torture. Even though they lost that far, they're still going to be able to stabilize and try to take this point for their own. Yeah, and it looks like they are going to do just that, as you were saying. Yep, they clean up the objective. Spotted Squid gets hit out by that grapple hook. Shy, not long for this world either. And that is a clean up and a cap here for the side of Hog and Ball Torture as they start to count up the percentage. Yeah, this is a classic Tier 2 composition right here. I used to see this all the time when I played Tier 2 back in the day. The no back line comp. Oh, wait, Exo has swapped over to the Kiriko instead. That's an interesting swap off of the Mercy. Very interesting swap indeed. That means your Mercy does not have the support, but Shy's also switched over to the Symmetra here to try and get those Sim TPs. Teddy Graham, on the other hand, is not with the rest of the team. They are isolated out and get killed out here by a Tier 3 Warlord. He's trying to look for any other kills. Drowsy is next. They die to the hands of Fafidal. As now it's another it's another reset here for the side of Bastion. The Sinners are basically just pushing into their spawn door and not allowing them to set up. Yeah, just a really great job from Warlord of just constantly disrupting them to the point that they're not able to pay attention to, to Fafita's Spara. Yeah, definitely. Spotted Squid is able to get the kill onto CJ Cool, but that Tracer is going to be back in the fight before before you can even sit, before Tier 3 Warlord is able to get on top of this cliff. There you go. They're already out on top of the cliff, but CJ Cool is already back in the fight. As IOPI Bastion looking for the next push, as they want to try to take this high ground, it seems, but it seems like actually, no, they're taking the main ground. Want to try to get straight over to the point, but already you've lost Lupin already. Here comes Afara looking for the barrage, but they don't even need it as there's just so much pressure being applied to the rest of the Bastion OF, and they're just falling like flies. Yeah, I mean, this this is a tough comp to deal with. Just, just because they're all over the place, it's really hard to just track any one person down. 
And then look at this, uh, Hog and Ball Torch are going to have four ults for the next fight. And all Bastion OF tends to have is that Sigma Gravitic Flux. I mean, they'll probably get their Baptiste Amplification Matrix, but it's not, it's not really much they'll be able to do here, I don't think. And Sinner's Hog and Ball Torch are currently holding right by the right at the point, and the minefield comes out from Tier 3 Warlord and gets rid of Lupin. Drowsy also taken out. Overtime is triggered, but it's only a Sombra Shy who is hit in the face with a bunch of rockets. The Gravitic Flux comes out from Spotted Squid, and now there's two picks in favor here for the side of Bastion OF, but now your Sigma's out of the equation. So is your Lucio, and now with the point entirely cleaned up and a beat for extra measures, Hog and Ball Torcher are going to be able to take the first map in this series. Yeah, I mean, a great swap, honestly. Uh, <laughs> great swap to the ball comp. It, it worked incredibly well for them. They live up to their name. <laughs> and uh, and they just they do a really great job of having point control on this on this last map of Village. Yeah, definitely. Village just really was Hog and Ball Torture's wheelhouse. They were able to use it very well to their advantage here. But now comes the decision that Bash and OF have to make, and that is the second map, our hybrid map here, Shadow Fang. Mm -hmm. And based on what we saw on Sanctum, it seems like that they are better on that poke composition. So based on the map choices that they have, Midtown, Nubani, Blizzard World, and Eichenwald, what map choice do you think would be best for that composition that we saw them run on on Sanctum, or at least a variation of that poke composition? Um, I think the most pokey map of all of these is probably Midtown. That's what I would think. I mean, we'll, we'll see if that's what they opt for, but I would think Midtown is going to give you the most long sight lines to shoot through. Yeah, Midtown obviously could be a very, very good, very viable map. I already saw it earlier today. It, however, also can allow for a lot of Brawl style, which, of course, Hog and Ball Torture basically ran Junker Queen Brawl that entire time. The only time they didn't was on mm -hmm. Village, where they ran a composition that looked straight out of my gold comp games. Nonetheless... Yeah. We're going to see if they're going to be able to take advantage of it and be able to take the map into their favor here, no matter what map choice it is here from IUPUI, Bastion OF. But there were glimmers of hope there if you are a fan of IUPUI because Bastion OF was able to take a point off of Hog and Ball Torture. It was not mm -hmm. a clean 2-0 sweep. They looked very confident on Sanctum with that, comp with that composition. So they just need to get themselves in orders here to try and set up the next advantage. And the map choice has been selected here by IUPUI Bash and OF. We are going to Blizzard World here, Shadow Fang. Yeah, I've been seeing Blizzard World come up a lot in a lot of the games that I've casted so far. And I think it's a really, really strong dive map. So I, th I think Hog and Ball Torture could come out on that, on that gold comp, as you said. <laughs> <laughs> with the with the farmer see and the tracer and the ball i i think this is a really good map for any sort of dive comp you might want to play yeah definitely it can be a good dive map it really can allow itself to a lot of different styles yes you can dive right onto the top high ground be able to take that space away but you can also run brawl and just send it down main head to the point force your enemies to come to you you can also mm -hmm. run the poke constantly hide the high, constantly take over the high grounds and just poke from afar Blizzard World is very, very, is very, like, it, it has a lot of variance to it, at least until you get to that third point, which I have yet to see so far in CGL. Nonetheless, we'll have to see if either of these teams are able to get the advantage of one another mm -hmm. here on Blizzard World and which one's going to be coming out on top. Again, it's a first to three here, so if Sinners, Hog, and Ball Torture win this next map, they are at match point in this series, but that's looking way too far into the future here. We haven't even gotten into the map to really see what these two teams are trying to cook in the kitchen. Yeah, most definitely. And we have already seen some pretty good flexibility from both sides. Both sides opting for about, what, two or three different comps there while we were running through Nepal? Somewhat. We saw we saw the Junker Queen comp from the mm -hmm. side of uh, Cinder's Hog and Ball Torture with the Torbjorn. Then yeah. they tried to switch off. It didn't work into their favor. But then they came out on that Wrecking Ball wrecking ball hybrid composition with the Far Mercy, which was then a Far Akiriko. A lot of swaps across the board there for, for the Sinners Hog and Ball Torture team. Yeah. IUPUI Bastion OF, however, they came out on the Junker Queen comp. It wasn't working to their favor. Then they switched over to that Sigma composition, which worked a lot better, at least mm -hmm. on Sanctum. So we'll have to see what these two teams are currently planning to try and set up this next map for their own here because it could be a matter of trying to pick the right composition for the right time and being able to know when the composition is working and when it isn't. That is a very decisive factor. You have to identify when the comp is not working because if you don't, 
you're going to be on the receiving end of a loss because you are just hesitant to swap off and you're hesitant to change up your style. Yeah, absolutely. You just you have to be really, really definitive in your decisions, especially if they're going if they're going to be running that the ball composition again. It's very easy to get distracted by that wrecking ball and get lured into the trap of shooting the wrecking ball. You kind of just you kind of have to ignore the ball for the most part. Like the ball's gonna swing through and do what ball does. And I mean, you can shoot them if they mess something up, but for the most part, you kind of just have to ignore them and try and kill all the other players on the team. Ball has a million HP. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. And also, I've noticed, I've seen a team already that's had that sort of idea of, we need to do this thing and we need to do it now, but then they constantly were doing it and not switching the strategy on the fly. So it's just a matter of trying to set up those situations in your favor. Nonetheless, as we get an early look at the compositions here, Sanders Hog and Ball Torture on the defense here, and they're going to the Diva for the first time in the matchup here, Shadow Fang. They're keeping this Torbjorn. They have and now the Ash here for Fafita, but really mm -hmm. an entirely different composition compared to what we've been seeing from them. Yeah, yeah, I really like the Diva on this map. You can peel so, so well with, with D.Va right now, especially with that 725 HP. It's just, it's so, so hard to get knocked out of mech now with all that HP. It is crazy. But let's not forget Bastion OF is opting for this ball comp, a ball Echo Genji with Brig Zen. Yeah, I, mean, I don't this dislike makes, it. Yeah, I mean, this makes sense. IUPUI Bastion OF mentioned it mentioned to us that their favorite comp is dive and their favorite meta is wrecking ball so it makes sense if you want to try to run a wrecking ball comp this is the place to do it we'll see if they're able to get that advantage here with this wrecking ball as they slowly make their way forward Froggito going for a very aggressive push onto the echo of shy as now that wrecking ball is spotted squid just trying to distract get some sort of value in the back line drowsy goes in a little bit too deep almost gets their head taken off as they try to push in but so far it's just been hog and ball torture being able to hold their ground here as iupui's bastion look for this dive attempt to work spotted squid is currently on that right side probably going to try to roll up to the high ground or at least the back line but drowsy is actually going to dive on top of this echo and shy answers back with that focusing beam to get rid of the the ash immediately Froggito also out of the picture here is traded for the life of shy but I think if you are IPU, IUPUI Bastion, you are going to be happy with that. Now you've gotten two picks, and you're starting to cap this objective. Oh, wait. T3 Warlord takes out the Lupin right there. That, okay. that could be bad. It could be bad. The Zen out of the picture means you'd have no Discord Orb. You still have the Brigida for heals, who is currently 1v1ing this Diva right now, but the rest of the team is there to support. But still, there are picks going in favor here for the side of Hog and Ball Torture as they re engage into this. Drowsy and Teddy Graham out of the picture, and all of a sudden, IUPUI Bash and having to reset. But they did get that first tick, which is crucial. Yeah, you get a tick and a half there. So if nothing else, you get a tick and a half. And. It's, it was really just T3 Warlord managing to take Lupin out in that fight. It was really what turned it. Nice Ooh. sticky bombs, though. Very good sticky bombs from Shy, and that's actually a really good kill because that Diva was very close to getting the remake back. But, I mean, Fafita is able to answer back, getting that kill onto the Echo as well here. So a really good job from Sinners to be able to punish that aggression. And now both supports dying, but Lupin answers back with a kill onto the Ash here. So IUPUI Bastion have a very slim window to try and re-engage and get the advantage. The Transcendence is going to be popped here by Lupin as the Molten Core from CJ Cool is using the back line. Spotted Squid just trying to run away from the this diva that is chasing them down to the end of the earth and now lupin's not in a better situation getting burned down by t3 warlord drowsy answers back with the dragon blade slices down the torbjorn and trying to get more value but meanwhile IPUI bastion are still looking for these trade kills rally and duplicate now used but now drowsy and teddy graham are taking out a fight and shy not long for this world on that duplicate as it's another reset here for the side of IUPUI bastion and a costly one at that yeah, Fafita, Fafita really came in clutch there at the end, taking out that rallying Brig before they really were able to get their overhealth going or get any of their stuns out. I mean, that's big time. You pretty much just denied that entire support ultimate. And now Bastion OF only is going to have this minefield, but look, Froggito has a sound barrier. So even if you do land a good minefield, you still got the sound barrier to deal with it. Yeah, and they also have a minute left, so any ultimates that they're going to have are going to have to be built up at rapid pace. They're going to be built up at total mayhem pace at this point if they keep trying to stall out and wait for the put opportunity to push in. We also see that Bash and OF actually have sacrificed that one ult to switch over to a D.Va of their own, so now there's no ults in the play. They're going into an entirely dry fight, and Hog and Ball Torture have this D.Va bomb and Lucio Beat to try and counter it. 
T3, T3 Warlord is going to engage with the Diva Bomb, and they get the kill on the Teddy Graham, so now Lupin is the only support left. Shy's taken out by the Torm turret, and now with Lupin out of the picture, there's 20 seconds remaining, and Bastion OF even need to try and get out of this, or set up for another re-engage. Yeah, hopefully they're able to get another re-engage here, but I mean, this kill, this stagger kill onto Spotted Squid is probably going to make it to where that's not going to happen. Shy or Drowsy has to be the one to touch, but with five seconds left, they are currently all the way on the other side. Frogito's going to use the beats to try and engage and get them away from the point, and no one from the side of Bastion OF can touch that objective as they are un unable to cap the first point here on Blizzard World. But I did mention that first tick. They were able to cap 48%, which means that there is a situation where IUPUI win on Blizzard World here, Shadowfang. However, it's not that common. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to have to be a full, full hold. So, see, they, they got full held. Now they just have to fuller hold. You know, it, it happens. Typically, it happens on Gibraltar and Havana, though. So, we'll see if it can happen this time. I've got hope. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I mean, currently right now, there are 14,605 realities of how this map goes, and IUPUI Bastion wins one of them. As we see right now, IUPUI Bastion still trying to decide on what they're going to run on the defense, but no surprise to see that Hog and Ball Torture are going back to the Wrecking Ball here for their attack. Yeah, it definitely doesn't surprise me at all. As strong as they looked on that composition on the ball, it makes perfect, perfect sense. Play the Diva on defense for Defense Matrix, huh? And then you play the Wrecking Ball on the offense because it's going to have more more burst damage and ability to, like, the pile driver just CCs people so well and then just knocking them around as well so they can't sit where they want to as defenders. Like, Wrecking Ball is really strong right now. Yeah, I'm also noticing that uh, five seconds left. Uh, IUPUI Bastion currently do not have everyone at the field. Spotted Squid and Teddy Graham are currently running for their lives back from the spawn door. As Hog and Ball Torch are coming out on this ball composition, Fafita probably looking for that early pick on the Widowmaker as T3 Warlord is on the high ground, ready to boop off anybody in sight. They boop off Drowsy and start capping the point for their own, but they're soon going to be met by the entire force of Passion OF, and they lose 500 health in the matter of two seconds. As Hog and Ball Torch are trying to make their way forward, they've already forced Passion OF to hold on this objective and get no high ground presence. Yeah, they're creating a really nice kill box right now by forcing them just onto this point. You already see T3 Warlord going for those rolls, trying to get these crucial picks in their favors. IUPUI Bastion just trying to keep themselves away from the area, and already there's so much damage being piled in. Teddy Graham caught off on an angle, gets hit, killed out by Fafita, but Frankito is traded, so now Sinners are down one of his supports, and Tier 3 Warlord hits the random trap in the middle of the point and ends up dying to the hands of Spotted Squid here. So Bastion OF so far being able to hold here with this composition, but they still have to do it for three more minutes minutes and there's a torbjorn in your back line that is currently killing your mercy but that's a thing that just happened is this a ranked game this looks um, an awful lot like one of my ranked games yeah i wouldn't be surprised if it was at this point but now with that mercy <laughs> out of the picture bash and of are forced to be in a once again disadvantage here hog and ball torture have everyone back in the favor here comes that wrecking ball tier three warlord just diving into the point trying to find these crucial picks while cj cole and the torbjorn is looking for the back line teddy graham just trying to get into the point ends up going for a 1v1 against the tur turret which is one you are not going to win drowsy also gets killed out here by tier three warlord as now the rest of the team just trying to stabilize but now the minefield is on the point. Lupin is not long for this world. They get killed up by Frogito, and now it's Shy falling as well to the boop. CJ Cool is just going to step into the trap, and now Sinners and Hog and Ball Torture are going to be able to take this map and go to match point. I mean, uh, what, what else can we say about the Torb that we didn't already say in map one? Literally just keeping an entire player out of the fight. And as Torb, you're technically two players, so you got your turrets sitting out there in the front just kind of still shooting even though you are spawn camping one of the supports and you'll you'll take that you will take that you're keeping an entire support out of the fight that's a huge play yeah e even if it is a 4v4 it's a dps missing versus a support missing and a baptiste mm -hmm. cannot keep that entire team alive in that moment and at the end of the day it's just hog and ball torture being able to read out in the most it, being able to play 5d chess there while bash and yeah. of are stuck playing checkers and at the end of the day bash and of just couldn't do anything about it and they were forced to succumb to the pressure of not having one of your crucial supports so a good start here for hog and ball torture bash and of again glimmers of hope on that first map but that second map looked a bit 
rough here, but thankfully these two teams will be able to get a halftime break to discuss over what the heck just happened and try to prepare mm -hmm. for map number three. We'll be back after a quick halftime break, and when we return, it is our Flashpoint map of the series. Don't go anywhere. Yeah. 
Someone needs to call the local church as the Sinners are currently running amok in this matchup. They are currently 2-0 to zero in this matchup. And IUPUI Bastion OF are one map away to try to or have only one opportunity here to try and stop them. Or at least they have one up. They have to try and stop them from getting one more map in this series. Bowsy once again with Shadow Fang as we're heading into map number three. As is, the map choice from Bastion OF is an interesting one. New Junk City is the map selection for Flashpoint. Typically, teams like to run Suravasa, but it seems like Bastion OF want to try to pull a, pull a card up their sleeve and try to bring us to New Jug City to flip the script around. Yeah, yeah, it is definitely a different choice than usual. Uh, we typically do see Suravasa almost every single game. It's like the King's Row of Flashpoint, if you will. And everyone always picks that map. But I personally like New Junk City better. There's like, it feels like there's more variety across all the various points. I like Arena a lot as well, as, a, as far as like a starting point. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how these two teams are going to approach New Junk City and bring it to their own. As a reminder, IUPUI Bastion OF looked pretty good on map number one. They were able to take a control point off of Sinner's Hog and Ball Torture. But Blizzard World was basically a stomping. And so far, one of the support players on Bastion OF has not been having a great time. They've been eight, they got an Ajax, and they've been spawn camp twice. So they're having a very rough time. And hopefully that halftime break gave them enough time to mentally reset and get ready for this next map. Because that has to be the most brutal feeling in the world, Shadow Fang. Getting both of those in the same matchup. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. I mean it's not it's not like ajax themselves ajax i'm pretty sure ajax like four times in the same match so <laughs> you know you're still you're still you're still looking up a little bit ahead of that yeah, but nonetheless, we'll have to see what IUPUI Bastion OF are thinking of to try and make, take this map into their own here. It's going to be a tough ask. As a reminder, if they do not win this map, then Sinners Hog and Ball Torture complete the undefeated Golden Stage for the first mm -hmm. half of the season. They have not lost a single map, as a reminder, all season and not throughout the entirety of this midseason tournament. They will have won 18 maps in a row, which is a very hard feat to do, especially yeah. in a tournament like this, Shadow Fang. So there is a little bit of, there's a little bit on the line here for Sitter's Hog and Ball Torture, a little bit of bragging rights. Still though, if you are Bastion OF, you want to try to stop that momentum in its tracks before it gets way too off the rails. Yeah, and they're, they're going to have the opportunity to as well because typically most teams on Flashpoint are going to want to opt for that Junker Queen composition. So we could be seeing a mirror of the of that here because Bastion OF was trying to run that on map one. So yeah, I see no reason why they wouldn't try here. Yeah, they were trying to run that Sigma composition on that first map, which makes a lot of sense. It, it showed to work pretty well. And then when they got to second map, the Sigma composition was working at least until their support started getting spawn camped. So it just was an unfortunate circumstance there, but it showed promise. They just need to tighten up the strings or else they are going to be cut right through with Sinner's Hog and Ball Torture, who noteworthy are making a swap here, Shadow Fang. Dizero is, Dizero is coming in here for Frogito on the support role, so you are making a swap for the side of Sinner's Esports on your support role. I mean, considering Dizero knows how to play, Luz it says their favorite hero is Lucio as well. This probably makes mm -hmm. a little bit more sense. Nonetheless, an interesting swap here. Uh, also considering that Dizero is listed as a tank player so this means you're swapping up your entire composition you want to bring a tank player in to run on your support role and are not interested in running in your actual support player on support so we'll see if it works out for the favor of the center saga ball torture team yeah we saw frogito running that lucio a lot here so i'm wondering i'm wondering if it's just like a this person plays on flashpoint because they tend to be better at that map type sort of decision or if maybe they just want to give disro some play time because they they just want them to play you know could be that that situation as well 
Yeah, definitely. It could be a map-dependent situation. It could be just a playtime situation. So we'll have to see what it is. It could also be a hero decision. Maybe Disarrow knows a hero that the other two supports don't, or you're going to be running a specific composition that could work in the favor for your team here. But we are about to head in to our third map of the series, New Junk City. And this could be our final map. If Sinners, Hog, and Ball Torture take this map for their own, then the series is over, and they will be the mid-season tournament champions in the North American Diamond and division here shadow fang so there is a lot on the line for both teams iupui bastion are trying to stop the stop the sweep from happening and sitter talking ball torture are trying to take that title yeah i mean hope hopefully bastion bastion of is going to be able to put up a little bit more resistance than they were on blizzard world here i think they should be able to yeah, just because just because flashpoint is going to give you more opportunities to play things like this Junker Queen composition that we see. Ooh. Yeah, uh, it is a Junker Queen composition. Also, I mentioned Disro subbing in for support. Turns out they're actually playing tanks. CJ Cool is going over to the support after playing DPS, and T3 Warlord is going over to DPS after playing the tank. So basically, every player on Sinner's Hog and Ball Torture is changing roles here. So we'll see how this plays into the style. Disarro obviously being a tank player here, Rhino, or uh, excuse me, Saddle Fang, means that they want to try to run this Junker Queen for their own. This makes more sense to me. Disarro coming in specifically to play this Junker Queen. Perfect sense. We didn't see that pick too, too often from T3 Warlord. Yeah, definitely. They've mainly been run. They mainly been running that wrecking ball, or in some cases, the diva. Nonetheless, sinners trying to find their way in, but Disarrow immediately getting so much damage pumped in, and I'm forced to use the shout when they are basically at two-digit numbers. And now T3 Warlord brought out of the equation early here. Fafita is also gone here, so the sinners hog and ball torture team starting to crumble, and Bastion OF are finally being able to take the advantage for their own. Oh, and Disarrow gets pulled back by the jagged knife from Spotted Squid. At the end of the day, though, Bastion OF are going to be able to take the cap on Arena first yeah, if, the they, if they go back and cap it you know yeah. just, just give them give them a minute it takes a minute to go back there and get the point um i i kind of like the moira pick here you're just gonna have so so much sustain when you get into these really brawly fights but getting put really low there yeah, a little bit of risky play from Fafita, almost getting their life taken away from them before they're even able to enter into the objective. But now Hog and Ball Torture trying to push in with that shout from Disaro. Now they're trying to take the side angle as they notice the Junker Queen is walled off from the rest of their team. A little bit of miscommunication there, keeping Spotted Squid away, but they're able to get back, and they also get Tier 3 Warlord on the way out. So now the Junker Queen is gone. Your main damage pressure is out of the equation, and now IUPY Bastion just trying to rush forward. Now the speed boost is gone. Another beautiful Jagged Blade kill trying to get that Junker Queen back in, but you cost yourself your Lucio and your Junker Queen in the process, and now Hog and Ball Torture have an opportunity to re-engage. That is tough. You are going to have the Coalescence if you're Bastion OF, but do you even use it here, knowing you're probably going to lose the fight? We'll have to see, as it is the Lucio and Junker Queen who are gone. Here comes that Coalescence from Lupin, but they are killed out immediately by Disarrow. The Blizzard and the Riptire also used here by Hog and Ball Torture, as all the kills are starting to go blue in the kill feed. Bash and OF are going to be forced to give up this point, but they will be able to bring it over to 99%, so all they need is one clean fight victory to take Arena back. But for now, Hog and Ball Torture counting up. Yeah, I mean, that really all happened just because Disarrow was able to be kept alive just long enough for Fafita to turn around and get those, get the kills onto that Junker Queen and Lucio. But with that being said, you're still going to have all four of your other ultimates up if you're Bastion OF, and you have to run into a Kiriko, a Kitsune Rush, a Rampage, and a Sound Barrier from Hog and Ball Torture. So this this could really go either way. Definitely could. IUPUI Bastion taking the wide angle to the right side to try and get back to the arena. They're actually going to be able to step a foothold here. Here comes that Deadeye coming out from Drowsy. It is walled off by Fafita, who's now trying to shoot these icicles into anything in sight. The Deadeye, however, does end up getting nothing, but still, Disaro is out of the picture courtesy of that skill one from Lupin, and now there's no sustainability left for Hog and Ball Torture. Drowsy trying to get rid of his Kiriko, and now Fafita and the Exo out of the picture, and IUPUI Bastion OF making his Junker Queen composition work a little bit better and they're gonna be able to take arena as a result yeah just great fight win from the side of uh iupui they're they're catching disaro out a lot on this junker queen and just kind of isolating them super super early before the rest of hog and ball torture are able to push in 
So now as we head over to the refinery for our next point here, Hog and Ball Torture are making a swap. Exo is now going over to the Moira, so there's no more Kiriko for the side of Hog and Ball Torture. Here comes that Rampage from Spotted Squid, however. It lands onto three members, getting them all anti -ed. Lupin is dead, but Disaro is once again traded out here as Bastion, trying to keep themselves in this. But the tire coming out from Warlord gets rid of Spotted Squid, and now Shy is not long for this world. All that's left is Drowsy on the Cassidy, but they are once again not long. They do get the Magnetic Grenade kill on the CJ Cool, but can't escape with their life. And at the end of the day, Hog and Ball Torture will take the refinery first. Yeah, yeah, you I, I do wonder what, uh, what caused Bastion OF to not use their sound barrier there. I thought for sure they were going to use the sound barrier once the tire came out. But, uh, but Hog and Ball Torture managed to hold on to their Rampage, and now they have Blizzard up again from Fafita, so maybe it was a smart thing holding on to that sound barrier, because that's a really good counter for those two ultimates. We'll see if Teddy Graham does not Ajax this this time. As here comes the Rampage from Disaro. It lands on the two. Spotted Squid and Teddy Graham caught out. And now Shy stuck in a terrible situation right out of the Ice Walk and sent back to the spawn. Spotted Squid also killed out by Disaro's Carnage. This is another reset here for the side of Bastion OF. And they have to leave quickly or else they're not getting another fight. Uh, yeah, those kills came through quick enough. They might be able to get another fight. But if Hog and Ball Torch are going to play this aggressively and force them to fight their way to the point, there's not, there's no way Bastion OF is going to get a touch. Definitely. So Bastion OF trying to make their way forward. Disaro is going to be backing up to the rest of their team here. We'll have to see what Hog and Ball Torch are planning with this Blizzard. And if IUPI Bastion can even touch the objective, the answer is no. They're going to give up the objective here and hoping to God that they randomly picked the correct one. Unfortunately, with the, based on the decision the Sinners are going, they did not. Bomb Flats looks like it's going to be the next objective. No, it's Junkyard, actually. So IUPI Bastion are in a better spot. Not a 100% not a better spot, but they will be mm -hmm. able to get to the objective first and set up. Yeah, both teams are going to have tons and tons of ultimates prepared for this fight. And, I mean, I'd be watching for Fafita's Blizzard. They've been really, really good with these Blizzards so far in this game. IUPUI Bastion looking for the engage. They engage here with the Coalescence. Exo does as well on the side of Hog and Ball Torture. Fafita currently on the point, trying to force someone from Bastion OF down. As here comes the Deadeye from Drowsy, and it catches on to CJ Cool. A very good pick there from the side of IUPUI Bastion OF as they're trying to clean up these picks. Warlord is dead, so is Exo, but Shy and Lumen Lupin are traded. Do Hog and Ball Torture want to keep investing into this? Fafita says yes as they're trying to kill out this Cassidy, but now that Distro's out of the picture, it's only this May left alone to their own devices. They're going to invest the Blizzard into this to try and turn it around, and Spotted Squid is stuck in the middle of it they're dead in the hands of Fafita now the beat from Teddy Graham lands onto nobody except themselves as they're trying to keep themselves alive against a May and a Lucio and at the end of the day the Sinners able to bring it back by the skin of their teeth I had a feeling Fafita would come up with a big blizzard they have every other time so far players been crazy with these May ults and uh, that sound barrier just a little bit too late maybe if you use it on spotted squid when they get frozen you might be able to keep that fight going in your favor but t3 warlord getting in position to do uh you know typical junk rat things with this junk rat tire oh but the but the sir but the sir uh disaro is caught out in that small room here comes tier 3 warlord's tire it gets destroyed immediately by shy and they are unable to get the benefits of that concussion mine either here so bastion of trying to push in tier 3 warlord now out of the picture as they start to push in and take this objective that realistically should have been theirs if it weren't for the heroics from fafita as i say that though fafita finds two on this may they have been a legend on this hero, constantly changing it around the entire scope of the fight. But now, I think with it just being the support, Exo and CJ Cool on the objective, it looks like IUPUI Bastion will be able to take this back. But Tissero's back, Candy Graham's dead, and all of a sudden, it's another fight win for Hog and Ball Torture that realistically looked impossible just five seconds ago. Uh, yeah, Bastion OF just not able to get those final two picks out onto the supports. And once your Junker Queen makes it back, that's just too much sustain. As we can see them just running it down main into the Bastion OF spawn. So now as the point seems to be open on the ducks right now, Bastion OF trying to find their way there. But already you see Tier 3 Warlord is just sitting right outside the spawn door with the rest of the Hog and Ball Torture team. And they're just forcing IUPUI Bastion to make a decision. Either run out of a spawn door and potentially die or stay in your spawn with the Coalescence from Exo beaming you down before you even exit. And they decided to go for the ladder here. IUPUI Bastion now trying to set up. You do have Shy on the point right now who's going to be able to try and stall it out here before Sinners can take it. 
of their own, but you still have the beam team of Bastion left trying to run in, and they don't have their May on top of it. They are still going to try to stagger this out, however, looking for those perfect objectives, but Sinners take the point in the meanwhile, and now IUPUI Bastion are trying to retreat. I mean, just utter dominance so far from the side of um, Hog and Ball Torture. And they're, they're set up again. Fafita has another Blizzard ready to go here. And Teddy Graham does not have Sound Barrier to counter it. I would not be surprised if it's another big time Blizzard from Fafita. And Hog and Ball Torture are trying to set up for this cheeky play, knowing that the enemy team can come right through that wall. They wall up the Junker Queen of Spotted Squid, and now the beat invested here from CJ Cool. Distro tries to go for the Rampage, but they are running into a brick wall and get absolutely nothing with it. Now if now Fafita's out of the fight as well here. That's two ultimates from the side of Hog and Ball Torture to go to absolute waste. Darren Drowsy trying to get rid of his Lucio CJ Cool, but is missing every single shot. Now trying to get rid of the Moira, and they get sucked to death. The support line for Hog and Ball Torture keeping themselves up, but IUP by Bash and do take the point. Tier 3 Warlord coming in with this Rift Tire, looking for the perfect kill, and they get it onto Teddy Graham. So now Lupin has to be the sole support, keeping this point alive, but they're nowhere in sight to keep Spotted Squid alive, and the Blizzard from Shy used on the objective with no one getting caught in it except CJ Cool. They have to try and keep themselves alive, however, but it's not going to be enough with Exo just being able to use this DPS Moira to their advantage. Now it's just Lupin trying to stall out the point, but at the end of the day, Hog and Ball Torture are thrusted into one fight territory for the title. Ooh, this is gonna be really close. Bastion OF has three ultimates coming in here, but they're gonna have to like speed, speed onto this point. Rampage comes down and gets rid of Tier 3 Warlord. Bastion OF are currently on the objective, but here comes that Blizzard from Fafita, and the beat from Teddy Graham is able to land to keep everyone up, but only for a moment as Spotted Squid and Drowsy are dead. Now the Cole Essence comes out from Exo, cleaning up the remainder of the field. Lupin is the last remaining survivor on this Moira, just trying to keep themselves alive, but they are not going to be able to do it for long as all the picks are blue in the kill feed, and Sinners, Hog, and Ball Torture, 18 map wins, zero losses, and a mid-season tournament championship. I mean, honestly, just complete dominance from the side of the Sinners, Hog, and Ball Torture team. Uh, Bastion OF did have some good moments on this last map in particular, but just overall, overall, just really, really strong team play, coordination, and ult usage from the side of Sinners, Hog, and Ball Torture. Sinners, Hog, and Ball Torch just had this entire match under their belt before they even loaded into the game here, looking like the strongest team all season. I think it might be safe to say at this point, Shadow Fang, that Sinners, Hog, and Ball Torture are on the road to becoming the North American Diamond Tier champions because they have been dominant all season. There have been no roadblocks in their way. And now with 18 map wins to their name and an unstoppable force behind them, they are looking in a set position to be able to take this entire thing by the hand. Yeah, I absolutely agree. It would be tough to see any team in this tier beating beating this team because these these are supposed to be per this tournament the, the top two teams right now and it just didn't really look that close if i'm honest yeah definitely it looked like sinners hog and ball torture again just read the script before they read the script and were able to execute every line perfectly iupui bastion of however they did have some bright spots but mm -hmm. they need to really hone in on those bright spots shadow fang but because you can't just have some small bright spots and be able mm -hmm. to take on against the enormous mass of the beetlejuice star which yeah. is sinners hog and ball torture right now nonetheless so a really good series here shadow fang and what a way to end off the diamond tier division in the mid season tournament yeah, absolutely. You can't have any complaints when you see a really, really strong team performing at their top level apex right right when you want to see them do it, you know? There's still a whole other half of the season, though, so we could see some improvements from the team of Bastion OF and the other IUPUI team as well. There's plenty of other teams in this tier that, with enough practice, maybe they can make up this gap that's there right now between Hog and Ball Torture and the rest of the teams. Yeah, definitely. There is potential, especially with patches coming out. The midseason patch was recently just announced, so anything can happen here in mm -hmm. CGL. 
But that's going to do it for us here today. There currently is another stream happening over on the B stream. We'll be sending you all over there. And of course, tomorrow is the trademarked Friday night Overwatch here in the CGL mm -hmm. tournament, where we'll be continuing to cover all of the coverage of the mid season tournament happening this week. But that's going to do it for us here today. For my wonderful co caster, Shadowfang, our amazing producer, Rhino Vod, and our handful of observers, including Pufa and, Nor and Mara, that helped make this production possible and brought you all of this amazing coverage of this diamond tier grand mid-season tournament grand finals my name has been bowsy until we meet again we hope you have an amazing night